Hey everyone, I'm Savannah. I am so glad you are here today. We are continuing with our series about people in the Bible who are able to be strong and courageous because of who God is and the love He has for us. One way we see God's big, strong love for us is in the things He does for us. That's why our big idea today is, I can be confident because God has done great things for me. We can take comfort in knowing who God is and His love for us. Remember, God's got your back. You can be confident in Him and trust God. You can look forward to the good things He's going to do in your life because He loves you. So let's take a moment to sing a song. That song has words straight from the Bible. That means these words are from God. It's our Bible verse. Let's sing it out together and think about what this verse tells us. That Bible verse tells us that we can be strong and courageous. That's not always easy, especially when we face Goliath-sized problems. But when we know that God is greater, we can have confidence that God will do great things for us. Let's say our verse together. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. Now, we're gonna watch our Bible story about David and Goliath. I want you to think about why David had the confidence to do what everyone else was scared to do. Let's watch our Bible story all about David and find out what happened. Slapstick Theater, David and Goliath. This is David. Hey! David was a shepherd who lived in Bethlehem. David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was just a boy. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true because there was another king of Israel named Saul. Saul led the armies of Israel. One day, King Saul was with his army near the Valley of Elah. On the other side of this valley, the Philistines, the enemies of Israel, gathered their army ready to fight. The Philistines had a giant warrior named Goliath who challenged the Israelites. Hey! Goliath spoke badly of God and his people. He shouted and taunted them, saying, Choose one man to come down here and fight me. The Israelites and King Saul were very afraid. Meanwhile, David's father sent David to bring some food to his brothers and their captain. Goliath came out of the Philistines' army, and David heard him shout his usual mean taunts to the army of Israel. Whoa, what? As soon as the Israelites saw Goliath, they began to run away in fright. See ya! David asked, Who is this Philistine anyway that he has allowed to defy the armies of the living God? David's questions were reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Uh, hi! David said, Don't worry about this Philistine. I'll go fight him. Saul said, There's no way you can fight him and win. You're only a boy. Wait! But David told Saul that he had taken care of his father's sheep 
and rescued them from lions and bears. Then David declared, The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and bear will rescue me from this Philistine. So Saul said, All right, go ahead and may the Lord be with you. David picked up five smooth stones from a stream. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight Goliath. When Goliath saw him coming, he sneered at him and yelled bad things at David. But David said, You come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies. Goliath moved closer to attack, and David quickly ran out to meet him. He hurled a stone from his sling and hit Goliath in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. But he knew the power of God and trusted God to win the battle against the giant. Can you believe that little David beat big Goliath? I don't know about you, but I sometimes get scared like the Israelites did, but I don't have to stay scared. I can always remember God and be confident because of him. Now, let's see how we can be confident to face big things like David did by checking in with our friend Greg. We've met Greg before and joined him on his search for power. We've seen his love for reptiles. Now, he's on a journey to get big and strong. Let's join Greg and his cameraman, Dan, as they go on a search for true strength and what it means to follow God. Check this out. Ah, woo! Hey everybody, I'm Greg and this is Big and Strong. For the last few years, I've been lazy. I've been sitting on my couch, eating junk food and playing video games. But today is a new day. All the hard work starts here, going to the gym. So follow me, Greg, and my cameraman, Dan, as we start this incredible transformation. Come on, Dan. We're going to the gym! Big and strong! Big and strong! Ah. Ah. Come on, Dan! Hey guys, I'm back at Tabor and Cameron's home gym in their garage. Tabor has challenged me, Greg, to an arm wrestling showdown today. It's gonna be one of the biggest competitions I've ever faced, and I'm gonna need to train very, very hard. We know how strong he is. We have no time. The training starts now. All right, I'm hyped, let's do this. All right, gentlemen, first thing, uh, shake hands. All right, first things first, let's go over the ground rules. Rule number one, okay? Only one arm. One arm, you understand that? And rule number two, elbow on the table. If it lifts off, I'm gonna slap you, and then I'm gonna disqualify you. Rule number three, no biting, no pinching, no scratching, no gnawing, none of that, understand? All right, hands together. First off. Whoever wins this competition is gonna win a slice of banana bread that my generous mother made. I love you, Mom. Boop. All right. Put your hands together. <clears throat> On your mark. Get set. Go! Oh, big and strong. Big and strong, Greg. Come on, Greg! Ah. I've been training all year, Tabor. Oh! Greg, they get it! So close! You got a long way to go before you could beat me, buddy. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Tabor. Okay. You fought with honor. Thank you. Can I have some banana bread too? Today? Everyone gets banana bread. <laughs> Can you guys ice my arms? I need ice. All right. I need All ice. Right, let's help him out. Let's come on. Oh. It's okay, bud. It's okay, right. maybe okay. next time? Yeah, come here. Maybe next time yeah. I'll win. I think I just need oh. two seconds. I got you, bud. Here we go. I got you. Here we go. I got you. Get, get him through. I want the banana bread. Give it. Don't drop it. Oh. Well, I didn't beat Tabor like I thought I was going to. Classic Greg. But you know what? I got some ice on here. Ugh. 
and the arm I think is gonna heal up. We're gonna be okay, and I challenge them to a rematch in a couple weeks. But today we're talking about one of the most famous stories in the Bible. Three words, David and Goliath. Now Israel was at war with the Philistines. The Philistines had a giant named Goliath. This guy's bigger than Tabor. Now Goliath, he mocked the Israelites, challenging someone to fight him. King Saul had placed a prize on Goliath's head, but no one wanted to challenge him, except David. David's kind of like me in this story, huh? Anyway, David was a young kid from Bethlehem. Now, as a shepherd boy, David had fought off lions and bears. He knew he could handle Goliath. David went out and challenged Goliath to a one-on-one -on -one combat. Goliath laughed at this, but David meant business. He pulled out his slingshot and placed a stone in it. Then he twirled the slingshot around and around and threw the stone right at Goliath's forehead. He killed him instantly. I mean, and this was just a boy who killed a giant. Now, David wasn't king yet, but he was already a celebrity. The soldiers sang songs about David, celebrating his bravery. <sighs> I wish people would sing songs about me. I wanna love this guy. Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Ababwa. Maybe next time. But hey, David had a long life ahead of him. When he experienced challenges throughout his life, he looked back on the time he defeated Goliath. I mean, that memory was a powerful reminder of how God used David to accomplish something great. Now, when we go through trials in our lives, we can look back on times in the past that God's provided for us in big ways and small ways. Now, these thoughts help give us peace amidst stress and uncertainty. We can have faith that God will provide because our whole lives are evidence of how much he provides for us. Now, this lets us walk confidently no matter where life leads us. We all encounter giants in our lives. I may not have been able to defeat Tabor in an arm wrestling match, but there are so many great things that I can achieve and overcome in life through God's help. On my own, I'm weak, but the good news is that I never have to be alone. God is always with me and he's with you too. Now, he might take our lives in directions we don't expect, but he'll always be right there with us. God has a plan for all of us. And the most important part is salvation. By believing in God and his son, we can be saved from our own sin and follow our true destiny as God's children. Because Jesus died on the cross for us, we can be forgiven of our sins. He took our place on the cross so that we could be free to follow God. When we choose to follow Jesus, we'll be able to spend forever with him one day in heaven. By choosing to follow Jesus, by asking him to forgive your sins, you can choose to be a part of his family. Jesus loves you more than you could ever imagine. If you've never invited Jesus into your life and asked him to be your savior, you'll have the opportunity today in a minute with your leader. And Jesus loves you so much and he's ready to be a part of your life and for you to belong to his family. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for watching big and strong. I got to finish icing up my arm because I got a big rematch against Tabor. But that's it for today's workout and I'll see you guys soon. And don't forget, be encouraged, get motivated and have a great week. See you guys. Ah, all right, see if we can get out of here. Dan, I need some help. Dan. In the video, Greg reminds us that we are not always the strongest. In fact, sometimes we will be weak, but that doesn't matter to God. God loves you. He made you and has done great things for you. Maybe you think, what has God done for me? Greg talks about one of the greatest things God has done for all of us. One word, Jesus. We can be confident in him. When we believe who Jesus is, believe he died on the cross to save us from our sin, and try our best to love and follow him every day, then we are putting our confidence in God. If you wanna do that today, or if you have any more questions, reach out to a parent or grown up who loves Jesus, or reach out to us here at Saddleback Kids. I hope you had a great time learning about today's Bible story, which reminded us that God's ways are truly best. We can have confidence in God, he can be trusted. He loves us and wants good things for us. I'm so glad you joined me for Church at Home today. We'd love to see you in person at church too. Check out our campus locations and find a Saddleback Kids near you. Don't forget, we have some awesome activity sheets, coloring pages, and even some stuff for your parents online at saddlebackkids.com. Check it out and we'll see you here next week. Bye. Oh.